Ellis. Hey, congratulations for Crisis. That, Thank you, Jake. Is, a, a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's it's very compelling. I was like enthralled to, um, from the beginning to the end. <laughs> Excellent. Tell a friend. <laughs> I will. So uh, so let's start off with the easy question. Um, I, I know it's been a while since you, you, you made a film, but where the original idea came from for Crisis? So Crisis was inspired, you know, it's um, a kind of frank look at the opioid epidemic as it stands today. And back when I did Arbitrage, um, I actually had some friends who got involved with opioids, uh, you know, as users, unfortunately. Um, some of them aren't with us anymore. And um, it was really a striking experience because so little was known about opioids at that time. And as, as time went by and I was looking for what would I do with the new film, um, the issue started to come to the fore. And I was reading about it in the Los Angeles Times and New York Times and started to see, boy, what did these opioid manufacturers know? Uh, when did they know it? And how did the government regulation uh, involved with all this. So I thought, you know, this is fascinating, but I'm not, I don't, I make thrillers, you know, I don't want to make a didactic film. But I finally got the idea, what if you created a thriller out of this and you did a sort of traffic style, I'd love the Soderbergh's traffic about cocaine in Mexico, but you did something like that in this realm, but you really took a look at the issues uh, all the way from where Gary Oldman's character is in the film up on Mount Olympus with the drug companies as a whistleblower fighting that. And then you went into illicit diversion with the gangsters and you know what I'm involved with with Michelle Rodriguez in the film and the undercover operation. Um, and then you looked at how does it impact users, uh, Evangeline Lilly's character, um, Lily Depp's character, you know, so to give a, a rounded exploration of this and to set it in a thriller context where people could have an enjoyable cinematic experience. Well, I, I, w I was definitely thrilled, but, uh, but one of the things when I was watching this film is that this could have easily been three movies. Why, why did you want to converge so many different plot lines into one film, though? Well, I have loved those kind of films. We don't see them as much anymore now, I guess, because uh, there's a bit more focus on multiple stories in television. Um, but I remember 21 Grams, Babel, even LA Confidential. You know, I, I guess I'm a value guy. So, uh, you know, I pay my 10 bucks and, you know, I want to put it all in there. Give, give me a lot. Give me, uh, give me this actor. Give me these great actors. Give me these, you know, give me the action. Um, so I, I guess, you know, want to make sure that you're fully entertained, but really it's a topic that requires so much. So I didn't have the runway for three movies. Just getting the money for one is difficult enough. Um, I figured, you know, if this was my shot, let's try to make a, a definitive overview of the subject. You, you have so many different, because of the um, different subjects of this uh, movie, you have so many characters in this film. How did you want, as a director, wanted to balance all that out uh, evenly? So that was um, definitely a consideration. How do we move between the stories and how do we link them? Um, and I think in the writing process, I kind of laid all that out. I wrote the stories maybe individually and then I interspersed them or came back and forth. Once I got the actors together, I love to do a tremendous amount of rehearsal and I love to work with the actors and bring in their input. So we would shape the script together and expand their characters, make sure that they really felt fully dimensional. Um, now we shoot the film. Okay, we have a ton of footage. So the first cut of the movie was three hours. Now it's an hour 50. Um, but what we didn't end up throwing anything away. What we did is we montage things and we linked things and we suggested things and we used imagery from here and put it here. Um, this movie has a wonderful score by Raphael Reed, uh, assisted by Cliff Martinez. Um, and we, uh, we, we interwove it. So I, I think the best films take place somewhere between reality and the imagination. Um, and so you want to create a kind of dreamlike experience to bring the audience in and have them there with you on the ride, um, you know, not too analytic, more emotional. Um, and so a lot of that was also done in the selection of imagery, whether we go in close uh, on an actress's face, you know, and, and, and we, we bring you sort of into the psychology. So I guess letting emotion lead um, and, and, and seeing how we could use that to link the story. When people watch your movie Crisis, they're going to realize there are so many good actors in this film. How, how did you actually pull that off? I mean. 
So the first uh, person to come in was Gary Oldman. I had met him uh, during the time of Darkest Hour and I was an enormous fan. I'd written the script, I gave it to him. Right away, he said, okay, let's do this and I'll even produce it with you, uh, lend my name to it, help you assemble the cast. Then I'd loved Evangeline Lilly forever. So I approached her cold, but then it was calling people I knew. Greg Kinnear was an old family friend. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez, a good friend of mine. Um, Lily Depp, I knew socially. And I would just, I'd say, listen, I don't have any money for you. Can you come up to the freezing cold of Montreal where I'm shooting? Uh, but, you know, it's for a good purpose. And, uh, and we can create something really fun, a great character. And uh, Luke Evans came in from London. Um, I was surprised at the level of support that I got for this project. I think it's because the topic was meaningful. Everybody knows someone who struggled with addiction. It touches everyone's lives. Uh, so I think I had a, a great backing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think I attracted people that are a little bit as wild as me. Uh, so um, they, were, they were down for the mission. What, what is your attraction for thrillers? Um, you, you mentioned that you love doing thrillers. What, what about thrillers that, uh, that, is, that became like your formula? Listen, I was always inspired by uh, thriller literature, whether it's um, going back to uh, the Greek plays, um, you know, or Dostoevsky, um, or, um, you know, even Brady Stanellis, with whom I wrote a, a few movies, American Psycho. Um, I like characters on the edge. You know, when someone goes to the limit and you see what they're capable of, you can really get a look inside of what they're made of. Here we have three heroes, I would say, but I think they're kind of anti-heroes. Um, a concept I talked about with this film, with the actors was, you know, sometimes if you want to make a difference, you know, you've got to do the wrong thing to do the right thing. You have to break the rules and color outside the lines. And I think we see in society, it's very hard to have a voice and make any positive change. So um, how far are you willing to go? in the pursuit of something that you think is true or just. And um, I think the thriller is a great mechanism to explore that. It, it pushes everybody to their natural limit. And it says, um, when someone comes up to the line, what will they do? And that's a very exciting place to be in a movie. And if you did actually choose one of your storylines to, uh, to continue on, which one did you love, love the most that you would have loved to make it into a full length feature? It's hard to say, you know, it's sort of like asking which one of your children, uh, you know, would you go with? I mean, you love them all um, and they all have uh, their foibles and they all have their their beauties. Um, I mean, certainly I think there's more to say about the pharmaceutical uh, industry um, and uh, the drug development industry, because it is a wonderful thing that can be extremely helpful. But at the same time, big money comes into play. And, uh, you know, that can always skew motives. I think Gary says at one point, you know, follow the money. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, it's, I always look at looking at the, the sides of society where people with good intentions become corrupted um, through, uh, through the profit motive. I mean, that's just American life. So um, fun for me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nicholas, uh, for speaking with us. Um, it, it is a pleasure and it's a great thrill to uh, watch this film. Gig, thank you. Thank you. Bye now.